Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about manual muscle testing that is MMT. Let's get started. So under this topic, we are going to cover the definition, the two types of testings, some important factors and limitations of your manual muscle testing and then we will finally go on towards the classification which will cover the nomenclature and then we will discuss in detail modified MRC grading system. So to begin with definition, it is a clinical assessment technique which evaluates the strength of an individual muscle or a muscle group. This test helps to determine muscle weakness imbalances or neurological conditions affecting muscle function. Manual muscle testing can be divided into active test and break test. So in active test, I will ask Joe to create a shoulder flexion to check the strength of his shoulder flexors. And if I'm doing this test using active test, what I will ask him to do is create a complete shoulder flexion. Whereas if I'm using a break test, I will ask him to hold 90 degrees of shoulder position and I will slowly start to apply pressure downwards and try to break this position and as I keep increasing the pressure at some point he won't be able to resist it and the position will be broken and that will be the break test. So if we go over the exact definition the active test assesses the muscle strength by having the patient actively contract the muscle throughout its full range of motion against the resistance and the examiner applies resistance throughout the movement. Whereas in break test, the examiner gradually increases the resistance until the patient breaks, that is, can no longer hold specific position. Now, there are a few important factors that need to be considered when we are assessing the strength of the muscle through manual muscle testing. These factors are assessing the range of motion, comparing the contralateral side, trick movements and time to recover or rest. So this can be remembered through a simple mnemonic of ACT, A-C-T-T, -T, right? So first is assessing the range of motion. Why is this important? Because under the modified MRC scale, your plus and minus values determine what range you are able to do when you are grading the patient at two and three. We will go over this in some time. So hang on for that. Next is comparing the contralateral side. This is important because if you are stronger than the patient and if you have not checked his opposite side, you might grade him four instead of a five because of the subjectivity and you don't know the strength of his opposite side. Then we come to trick movements, which I think is one of the most important factors. Trick movements are basically compensatory movements that are carried out by your body when the muscle cannot produce the force. And it is a very important factor that needs to be considered during MMT because you can get tricked by the patient's body thinking that it is producing the movement you're looking for, but instead it's compensating that movement by using some other muscles. And finally, time to recover is also quite important because if you are not giving sufficient rest to the patient, you might end up grading them lower than their actual strength. So those were the important factors that need to be considered when you are testing the muscle strength. Next, if we go on to the limitations, poor functional relevance is one of the biggest limitations of your muscle manual muscle strength because this procedure looks at the strength of a muscle or a muscle group and not a function. So this gap can be filled by doing functional testing that is 30 seconds sit to stand test and any other function that you want to look at. Apart from this, you also have a limitation of intra-rater reliability. If a stronger person is doing the MMT, he might grade someone lower. And if a weaker person is doing it, he might grade someone higher, right? So this problem can be addressed by using tools like dynamometer, where you have the objective data on your hand. And finally, we can only assess concentric strength in your manual muscle testing because of the nature of the test because you either break the position or you work against the resistance in a concentric manner rather than eccentric manner, right? 
So this can be addressed by again using dynamometers like isokinetic dynamometer which looks at concentric as well as eccentric strength. So now that we have covered the definition, different types of MMTs and their limitations and some of the important factors that need to be considered, let's have a look at the classification systems and their nomenclatures. So there are different systems under your manual muscle testing. There is the system given by MRC, which is the Medical Research Council. There is the Oxford system, Kandal system, and then there is the modified MRC. So let's have a look at the nomenclature that is used at each stage. And then we will look in detail the modified MRC scale. So zero for MRC is no contraction, whereas in Oxford it's called as no muscle movement and Kandal it's called none. One is flicker of contraction under MRC muscle movement without joint movement for Oxford and trace in Kendall, which is trace of movement. Next is two, which is full range of motion in gravity eliminated plane for MRC. Oxford calls it moves with gravity eliminated and Kendall is poor. Three is full range of motion against gravity under MRC. Under Oxford, it is moves against gravity, but no resistance and under Kandal it is fair. Four is full range of motion against minimal resistance. Oxford is range of motion against gravity but light resistance and Kandal is good. Five is full range of motion against maximal resistance. Oxford is normal strength and Kandal is normal. A very important thing to remember over here is minimal and maximal resistance which is a very subjective term based on the person who is applying the force. So now that we know the nomenclature for different systems under the manual muscle testing, let's have a look at the modified MRC scale and see how grading is done under this system. So now let's look at the modified MRC and how we can do the grading through modified MRC. So first, if we take Joe over here, simple one would be grade three which happens against the gravity that is anti-gravity position doing a shoulder flexion. If Joe can do that, I'll give him grade three. Now, if he cannot do a full range of motion and only partial range is available, that is if you can see over here, moves through partial range of motion that will be graded as two plus. Now, what is the difference between two plus and three minus? Two plus will be when he can do the movement against gravity only in the lower half there. Whereas if he can do the movement in the upper half, that would be three minus, right? So test position is over here. That is 90 degrees working against gravity. If he can just barely hold it and then lower, that means he can work in the upper range there. That is three minus. Whereas if it's in the lower range there, then that is your two plus. Now going lower than that, we'll put him into gravity eliminated position. And if he can do a movement in the gravity eliminated position, that will be grade two. If he can do only partial range in the gravity eliminated position, that will be two minus. And then a flicker of contraction in the shoulder flexor area will be one and no movement without any muscle contraction will be zero. So that's simple. Now, if we go above three, it's fairly straightforward. So if you see three plus is slight pressure, then we have four minus, which is slight to moderate pressure that is against gravity, providing resistance throughout. Then there is four, which is moderate pressure, four plus, which is moderate to strong pressure and five is strong pressure. So from three onwards, it's a fairly straightforward process to understand. The only tricky bit is three minus and two plus. And sometimes different references say it in different ways. But what you need to understand over here is the range is the key. So three is full range of motion. And then if you just divide that full range of motion into half, that is your 90 degrees and then split it into upper half, which is the upper 45 degrees and the lower half, which is lower 45 degrees. If it's in the upper half, that would be three minus. Whereas if it's in the lower half, that would be 
2 plus okay so i hope i made that concept clear enough now let's quickly go over these grades and summarize the topic so again if we have a look at all these grades i don't want to summarize everything but just pay attention to these four two minus is horizontal plane that is gravity eliminated plane but only partial range and then if you do full range in gravity eliminated that will be two then if you go into anti-gravity position and move in the partial range but more like the lower half that would be two plus but if you can do the upper half or they also call it gradual release from the test position then that would be three minus some of the references also say that if you do horizontal plane movement but with some resistance that can be graded as two plus okay so with that i hope i've made this concept simple if you have any doubts, you can always ask them in the comments below or contact me on Instagram. So now let's quickly summarize the topic. We saw what is manual muscle testing and active and break tests that can be carried out. We saw what are the important factors, why range of motion is so important to assess. We understood what are trick movements and we will try to explore them further in future videos and the rest and recovery that needs to be given between testing. Then we saw some of the limitations of your manual muscle testing related to poor functional relevance, poor intraratal reliability and limitations with assessment of only concentric muscle strength. Then we saw different systems under manual muscle testing, the MRC, Oxford, Kendall and the most used modified MRC, which has additional component of 2 plus, 2 minus and 3 plus. 3 minus and 4 plus and 4 minus and finally the most tricky bit we saw how modified MRC works especially the grading around 3 3 minus 2 plus and 2 so with that I hope I made the topic simple enough in future I will try to make MMT videos for specific muscle groups so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching